I guess we'll go ahead and get started. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the second day of our Bicentennial Materials at Michigan Symposium. Uh, it's my great pleasure this morning to introduce our Vice President for Research, uh, Professor Jack Hu. Professor Hu is the J. Reed and Polly Anderson Professor of Manufacturing Technology and a Professor of Mechanical Engineering and Industrial and Operations Engineering. Uh, Professor Hu is the, um, the Vice President for Research, and he has been the Vice President for Research for about three years. Uh, prior to that, he was the uh, Associate Dean for Research and the Associate Dean for Academic Affairs in the College of Engineering. His research interests include manufacturing systems, assembly, and materials joining, hear that word, materials, sheet metal forming, statistical process control, and monitoring and robust design. So Professor Hu himself is also a material scientist. Uh, I, Professor Hu has lots of honors and awards, and including uh, an election to the National Academy of Engineering a couple of years ago. So we're very pleased to have him here this morning to provide us with some remarks about materials on our campus. Good morning. Is that on? Yes. OK. Good morning. Yeah, thank you for the kind introduction. Uh, it's great to see everyone. I think I know all the faculty members, but I don't know any of the students. Um, yeah, I congratulate all of you in putting together a outstanding symposium. Uh, in looking at all the faculty speakers, I was joking with uh, Alan Taub this morning. I said, yeah, everyone who spoke will, will be speaking deserve a chair professorship. I think most of you had one, except perhaps two or three who didn't, but you're all deserving a name professorship. The quality of the student posters, I think, are also very high, so I congratulate all of you for your outstanding work. Material research, uh, Rachel mentioned I'm also a material scientist. I'm definitely not a material scientist. Uh, in my work in manufacturing processes and systems, I deal with materials. Uh, so the materials play a very important role in how we deform them, how we join them. So my current interest in particular is in uh, joining processes of different materials. For example, how do you join uh, aluminum and copper together? How do you join carbon fiber composite together with metal and so on. So those applications are used in uh, automotive structures as well as in lithium ion batteries. So material researchers discover, design, develop, and apply materials for societal applications. So I'm more on the application side. So you discover and I apply. Materials are a cross-cutting area. So this is reflected by the speakers that you invited. So not only we have uh, faculty from many different departments within engineering. So of course, material science and engineering, chemical engineering, uh, biomedical engineering, mechanical engineering, and electrical engineering, of course, nuclear engineering. So we have a wide spectrum of discipline within engineering. But we also have chemistry, physics, dentistry. The one area that we are not reflected is medicine. But I think many faculty in the medical school also do research with uh, materials. So the interdisciplinary strength and also our organic culture for collaboration across campus uh, have been very, very strong. So that culture also helped materials research and education on campus. So our program in applied physics, for example, is a program between physics and engineering. So we have a very strong graduate program in applied physics. The program that is housed here, the molecular science and engineering, uh, I think in short we call macro, 
that actually began uh, with a former vice president for research many, many years ago. So that is still sustaining with good enrollments in PhDs. So those are exemplar educational programs where we brought expertise from the various disciplines together. Of course, our research uh, is also creating impact, both in the short term as well as in some exciting innovative projects. So I understand the most recent solar car that won second place in the Australian World Solar Challenge actually had use of the solar panels that came out of faculty labs at the Department of Material Science and Engineering. Uh, I think everyone who uses a Samsung smartphone or benefited from some of the OLED work that Steve Forrest and his colleagues did. Uh, so I think uh, that impact is tremendous. So several million phones are produced each and every day. So I think you can see the worldwide global impact of our research. So congratulations to all of you on what we are doing, uh, what we're doing in research and education. Now, I do want to use this opportunity to explain a little bit of what my office does. Uh, so the University of Michigan Office of Research, uh, President Schlesel was a, uh, it's a big office, it's a big bureaucracy. But I think we're here to support the faculty and also students. We support all research, uh, but I group our work into three main areas. So first, we support and foster or develop interdisciplinary research. If a research is within a discipline, usually I don't have to spend a lot of time. You have departments, you have schools and colleges that support the research that are within a discipline. But if a research effort or initiative covers more than two or three different disciplines or schools, then usually my office get involved in promoting and supporting the development of such an initiative. Examples of such initiative include MCD, so that's our effort in connected and automated cars. Data science initiative, so in 2015, we announced the data science investment as a $100 million investment, so that involved faculty hiring research initiatives, education, and infrastructure investment. In addition, there were existing research centers and institutes that report to the office of the vice president. So we have the Energy Institute that has been more than 10 years old. We have the Transportation Research Institute that is 52 years old. And then we also have a Center for Human Growth and Development so that study human growth, health, the environment, and all those. And then we have a institute in the study of women and gender. So that's Institute for Research on Women and Gender. So we built initiatives and hope many of them will sustain. Of course, some will not. And then we start new things uh, uh, almost every year. So that's research initiatives. Uh, second area is research support and research administration. We have a number of offices, so Office of Research and Sponsor Projects. So formerly, I think our faculty all know, we called that DRDA, but about five years ago, it was changed to ORSP. So that's the Office of Research and Sponsor <coughs> Projects. ORSP is the U of M Board of Regents authorized office that can sign and negotiate on behalf of the university uh, negotiating contract. So faculty and, of course, students, you are not allowed to submit a proposal without ORSP approval. So ORSP uh, really is the board authorized agent to submit proposals and negotiate contract on behalf of the university. Other service units include the Business Engagement Center. So we engage with about 1,200 companies every year. Of course, some are strategic partners where we do a lot of work, uh, we do a lot of research. But companies also provide opportunities for <coughs> students. Uh, we look for internships, we look for uh, fellowships, scholarships for students, and so on. So some of the larger partnerships 
uh, include, for example, Ford Motor Company, Toyota, General Motors, P&G, and so on. So uh, Procter and Gamble. But we work with 1,200 companies on average each and every year. We also have the Office of Technology Transfer. So that is the office that help protect uh, intellectual properties from the faculty. Um, so students are under a different policy in terms of undergraduate student IP. But graduate students, if you're paid uh, a university project, your intellectual property or inventions are treated the same as faculty IP. So tech transfer, protect them, and then license them. And uh, we also have a venture center that support startups or faculty. So those are the offices that support, uh, I would say, research and innovation. But we also have other, I would say, relationship building offices, uh, federal relations, state relations, and uh, uh, foundation relations. So they uh, together provide, uh, I would say, support for faculty as, as we explore opportunities for research. The third area is the protection of university research uh, through research ethics and compliance. So this is a big group of people. So uh, I think uh, we have uh, a large human research protection program. Uh, the University of Michigan is one research organization for all three campuses. So Ann Arbor, Dearborn, and Flint. Currently, we have five IRB boards. So that's institutional review boards. U of M Dearborn has one, Flint has one, the health system has two, and then my office has the rest. Uh, so that's health and uh, behavioral sciences. So any time you need to do social research with human subject, psychology, for example, then you need to go through an institutional approval process. We also run a campus-wide animal care and use program. Uh, so campus-wide, we use a lot of mice, rabbits, and all those for research. Uh, so those are comparative medicine. That means before you apply any models to human subject, you want to try it, computation, experiment, but experiment on mice, for example. So the protection and the humane use of animals is a very important aspect of research. Other areas of research ethics and compliance, uh, compliance. conflict of interest. So for example, faculty have startups. They have a dual rule. Uh, they are faculty at the university, but then they are also uh, stakeholders in their companies. So if you have projects that goes between the two, that means either subcontract from a company to the university, and then the faculty play a role, then we have to manage the conflict. Export control, so the uh, federal government has various regulations on technologies that can be, uh, well, cannot be uh, accessed by foreign national. Uh, so that is a important review process. Uh, of course, data security today is very important. So what we do in research, uh, we have to protect them so that uh, we remain uh, compliant with the federal rules. An important, um, I think, uh, everyone here need to know is the research integrity aspect. Uh, for anyone who works on NSF or NIH sponsored programs, uh, we have to go through a responsible conduct of research training. And then we also have an office that are uh, responsible for monitoring the training. And then if there are, uh, I would say, any complaints about research misconduct, then my office is responsible for the investigation. So those are all the things we do. Uh, so supporting interdisciplinary research, supporting all research through our services, and then protecting the university in our research conduct. So the overall mission is to advance the excellence and integrity. So as you, as we look into putting a materials institute together, I think the opportunities for collaboration is, uh, is very, very high because uh, as I mentioned earlier, materials research is interdisciplinary. So my office 
definitely can play a role in facilitating that process and supporting that process. So that's all my uh, remarks, and I look forward to working with you as you pursue this initiative. Thank you very much.